Hey guys, the DonnerMcClendarden.com and of course the House of Bicep. I'm here with Hunter at EliteFTS.com. We are working on his clean, clean or clean and jerk? Clean. Just the clean. We're going to simplify everything down. To make it clear, Hunter here is a football player. We are not really interested in making him uh, super proficient as a purist weightlifter. We're working on making him better and to have the clean transfer over into his skills on the field. We're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking for some progress. So he's already made a big mistake. He's got 60 kilos on the bar. He's got 20 kilos aside, 132 freedom units for those of you at home. Uh, he should have began with the bar and then I would have had him put a 10 kilo plate on each side, just like I do and work up from there slowly, slowly. This is not a strength movement. This is still a technical skill movement. Any mistake that you make is gonna be huge. So you have to learn the proper way to do it from the bar and then work up from there. Um, a couple of things that we talked about earlier was the power clean. We mentioned him doing the power clean. Uh, and what most people call the power clean is when they're catching it up high here at the top. And that's not a power clean. A power clean is anything where your hips are above parallel. Still a whole lot deeper than what I can catch. Still a power clean. A full clean is when you're going to catch it when your butt is absolutely all the way down. A couple of things to remember. It's almost impossible to do a full clean with less than 90% on the bar. Um, but we'll get to that here in a minute. Anyway, uh, if you want, go ahead and start and I'm just going to back up a little bit. And I'm going to watch you lift just a little bit and see if I can figure out what some of your mistakes are. Take another one, take another one. It's actually pretty smooth. We have to remember that with the clean, your, they call it the first pull. We'll just say basically getting the bar from the floor to your knees. Um, the only purpose of that is just to get the bar from the floor to your knees. The whole lift happens when the bar is at this extension point. Now you're, you're hitting the bar a little bit here and you can see where I trained with the Laco bar the other day and it scraped up the thigh. They say that when you clean, the bar does not hit the body. Okay. okay, so you have a little bit excess contact there where the bar is hitting the body. So if you're doing the clean and you end up with a spot where the bar is hitting you, you're doing it wrong. You should have a scrape, and mine is about four inches long, where the bar slid and extended up the body. Okay, so you're allowed a brush, not a smack. Uh, a lot of that comes from when you see someone do a clean properly it looks like there's some sort of smack on the body, like it, it, it hits the body um, and they're jumping from there and the bar is actually smooth. Um, I want you to take another couple of reps, another set of two, and I want you to slow down off the floor and then once the bar passes your knees, I want you to speed up from there. Okay. Okay, just try a couple. Th th this is not something we can fix um, today. It's just something where if I can give you one idea now, it's probably going to hit you six months from now, magically in the gym. It's going to come across perfect one day in the gym, and you're going to be like, oh, that's what Clint meant. Okay, so just try a couple more, a little bit slower from the floor. Just a little bit slower from the floor. Okay, once again, I'm going to say we're not going to fix this today. You probably have to go home and watch this on video. Yeah. But if you can see it from the side, most probably, you are here. And the only thing that you are thinking about is I've got to get under this and catch this. Okay, so you are here. And the only thing on your mind is I have to go from here to the catch. And you completely left out the point where you have to go here. Okay, you left out that complete extension right there, which means you have so much more weight in you. Okay, the clean is nothing, but you know, all the magic happens from here and to be able to have that jump. And at this point at the jump, the barbell is free. You aren't pulling it at all. The barbell is gonna travel completely by itself. And you have to think about if this bar is touching a wall, a ceiling per se, 
And if this bar is on a ceiling, you're actually pulling yourself against that ceiling to pull your, to pull your body under. Like the same thing if you're playing football or judo or anything else, all the stuff that happens on the field isn't just about how hard you hit someone else. It's how you can play off someone else's actions. You can make someone like me look really stupid on the football field by hitting me the correct way, going under me, standing me up off the line, you know, juking me, moving around me, and I'm gonna look really dumb on the football field. But it's all about how, knowing how to use your body with you know, whatever implement is in front of you. Okay, so I want you to try one more time. The only thing I want you to think about is to get up as tall as you possibly can. Whatever happens from there, if you don't clean it, if it falls, if it rolls out and takes out half the gym, I don't care. But the only thing I want you to think about is when you come from here, don't let it hit you. Don't think about even grabbing the bar. Think about extending all the way up. Try another, try another set of two. That was very smooth. You made the extension. There was no contact on the leg. The bar brushed. Try it one more time. I want you to relax a little bit. That's very, very smooth. Okay, let's take a second. Let's just add anything to the bar that you want to add to the bar. And then I want to see you catch it in a clean and then squat down just a little bit. And then we want to turn that to what we possibly can into a full clean from there, or at least, a, or at least an actual power clean. Okay. Uh, so whatever you want to add, you want to add the, the 10. It's a 10 kilo? Yeah. Okay. How does the weight feel? Um, Okay, I'm sure it probably, it might even feel more difficult with the way that you're lifting this uh, because it is changing something. Um, as a football player, if I, if I changed any, you know, even, even the most basic, you know, body movement that you're making on, on, on the field, if I told you to do something completely different, it would probably make you slower. You probably wouldn't hit as hard. You probably wouldn't move as fast because you made a change. Okay, so if you're going to make a change, start with a lightweight and then slowly make that change over time. Don't worry about getting it right today. So when you come to the gym, don't think about the 10 things that Clint said I have to do right that I'm doing wrong. Just come today and say, hey, I'm gonna fix one of those things. Because if you can fix one of those things every time you go to the gym, you'll be a master in no time. But it looks so much, it may be more difficult, but it looks so much smoother. Try it one more time. I don't care if it's just one solid single, Sometimes it's hard to have good technique on doubles and triples. You're going to jump straight up, full extension. That's very smooth. You try one more? Yeah. Okay. Now this, this may be what throws off your technique a little bit. This is what makes, it may throw you back into making the same mistake. But the violence of this lift has to come from here and the jump up. I mean, that's, it's, the, the clean is a very, very violent lift. Um, so you have to stay relaxed from the bottom while keeping your body posture correct. And then once you get from here, it has to be a very violent lift to make that full extension. Okay. Uh, but I want you to put a little more drive, a little more intensity. I want to hear you when you make that extension. Come on, this is yours. Easy weight. That's fine, it just clipped your knee, that's all it was. Uh, the bar path is very smooth. The bar path looks to be in a very almost straight line. Um, but the, the only thing that I, would, I still want you to work on is being able to make that, that full extension up. Um, you can do that a lot of different ways by just working on pulls. Uh, your best, you said your best clean is 255? So it's 115 kilos roughly. I would probably tell you that whatever your best clean is, after you're done with cleans, put another 10% on the bar or you know, another 10 kilos per side and just do pulls. Uh, three sets of four reps. Um, you see a lot of the shorter guys uh, with small waist. They'll actually stand on a 10 kilo plate or even a 20 kilo plate to make it even deeper to force the legs and to have to learn to make that full, uh, full extension. So I would tell you 
whatever your clean program is, if you want to get better, and if your problem, and everyone's problem is almost always the pull, and making that full pull straight up, is I would tell you to add 10 more kilos per side than whatever your max is, and just do three sets of four reps on the pull. Wear straps, there's nothing wrong with wearing straps on pulls. I wear them, everybody wears them on pulls. Um, do you want to work on trying to make it a good pull? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you want to add some more weight? Yeah. So I, I really think, if we're gonna make you better at the clean, it doesn't serve any purpose to adding a lot more. This is 80 kilos. It doesn't serve a, a big purpose to adding a lot more weight to the bar. Um, this is a weight that I would have you just drill, drill over and over. Now, if your goal was to have a big clean, I would have you practice technique with this and then whatever kind of happens after that just kind of happens. But if we can make you better with this and then every week, if we can add a couple kilos to the bar, a few, you know, five pounds to the bar, and improve your technique with five pounds more than slowly but surely that will transfer over into big heavy weights. Okay. Um, let's make a good, let's make a good, uh, just a good pull. Have you done pulls before? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's just make a good pull with this and then we'll take the tens off and replace it with twenties. Okay. Oh, we'll just go ahead and make it with this. We'll start with this. I can see you make something with this. Let's try a couple more. Slow it down from the floor. Remember, nothing matters until you get past the knee. Slow it down from the floor. That's not bad, but there's no way you're gonna get under it from there. I want you to keep your chest up a little bit more from the start. Go ahead and get from start position again, because you, have, you don't have the ideal body type for a weightlifter. Okay, you're, you're built a lot like, you're, we're, you and I are built a lot alike, so our levers are a little bit different than most people's. Um, so you're not ever going to have a textbook clean or a textbook snatch. So you're going to have to figure out what works best for most people and then what works best for you. Okay, this is the same thing as the clean, except you're not getting your elbows under. Okay, let's try another set of two. It's not bad. Okay. What I want you to think about, okay, start and get, in, get into position. Okay, right here, if there was something sitting on your back, at any point during the lift, when you make the pull, if you stood up, would it fall off your back? Because I see your hips coming, your hips are rising, and as soon as your hips rise, you're putting your body completely out of position. So the only way you're gonna make the lift from here is with all lower back. And if you use your lower back, then you're not using your legs. Yeah. Okay, so your, le your back is a posture type thing. Your back has to stay, you know, solid. It can't move. So everything that you see in, in, in weightlifting, the back holds everything together so nothing moves, and the legs make all the lift. That's why weightlifters have absolutely huge legs. Their back normally looks crazy like granite, but they really don't have large upper bodies. Okay, I want you to try one more time, one more rep. Um, and just, I want you to lead with your chest, present your chest at the bottom and just lead with your chest. Like there's a big audience and you want to show them your chest as much as possible. When you, when you get down, lead with your chest and keep it up the entire time. So you make, till you make your lift. You have long legs, uh, like me. And whenever I clean, uh, I train with small, flexible people and I'm neither one of those. So when I make my clean, if you watch when I make my clean, my knees will actually come out to get out of the way so I can make that jump. Might be something you wanna work on in the future. Let's try another set of two on the pulls. Chest up, present your chest the whole time. It's not bad, try one more. Relax, relax, relax. Present your chest. That's not bad, it's not bad. Go ahead and drop it. Well, we're not, we're not going to fix <clears throat> we're not going to fix much, and that's probably the biggest mistake that everyone that decides they want to learn to clean, they want to learn to snatch, they want to learn to jerk. That's probably the biggest mistake is the thinking that they're going to go to a seminar and learn it in a weekend, um, and it's very disrespectful to weightlifters. It's like saying I can learn the sport of football if I go to a, a Saturday football camp. It's not going to happen. 
You know, we all laugh at that. Like, I'm going to go become a doctor because I went to a seminar on a Saturday. It's really disrespectful to the guys who have spent their entire lives and are continuing to spend their entire lives at getting better at the sport of weightlifting. This is something that you have to practice long term. And for most people, it's never going to have any kind of carryover to their actual performance on the field. But if you spend the time, you work on it, you will get more flexible, you will get more explosive, and eventually you will get brutally strong at this. For most uh, football players, you may find that working on your pulls helps you more on the field than the actual clean does. Because you may find that you can do pulls with 400 pounds, whereas you can only do a clean with 250 pounds. So we have to decide which one of those is going to help you best when you get on the field. So that's my biggest suggestion to you is just start light and play with it. Work on increasing the pulls. Have someone else. Uh, my wife watches me when I lift. Have someone else that you trust that can watch you. They don't have to be a great weightlifter, but they have to know what they're looking at when they're looking at you to be able to say, this is your mistake. And they can talk to you between every rep and say, you know, chest up, present your chest. Have some patience. Take your time. Don't use your arms extend all the way up. So have some patience, have some faith in them, cut them a little slack, even though they are criticizing you on every single rep, and don't be afraid to criticize them as well. We're not gonna fix everything today, but like I told him, when you're working on the clean or the snatch, just try to fix one thing, try to focus on one thing every day when you go to the gym, and eventually you'll be a great weightlifter.